Texas House Democrats have fled the state and now landed in Washington, D.C. Um, they, after fleeing Texas to stop a Republican-backed bill that makes it harder to vote in the battleground state that already has some of the toughest restrictions in the country. This comes after hundreds of Texans waited in line for hours over the weekend to speak out against the changes, which would include a ban on 24-hour polling places and drop boxes and stop drive through voting. The Texas House is set to reconvene in a special session today, what critics call the suppression session. But without the Democrats, it won't have enough members present to reach quorum. Meanwhile, President Biden set to deliver his first major speech on voting rights since Republicans deployed the filibuster to stall the sweeping voting rights bill, the For the People Act. Speaking in Philadelphia, he'll lay out the moral case for voting rights and denounce Donald Trump's big lie about a stolen election. For more, we go to Washington, D.C., to speak with Jarvis Johnson, Texas State Representative for District 139th in the Houston, Texas, and Brownsville, Texas. We're joined by Gilberto Hinojo. Chair of the Texas Democratic Party. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! So, State Representative um, Jar Jarvis Johnson, can you talk about why you fled the state of Texas? Well, obviously, you've heard everything that we've already said. This is a suppressive session where the governor and the Republicans have done everything they can to regulate and to put in place more restriction uh, for voting. They're created uh, voting that takes us back to pre uh, the voting rights bill. And so that's why we're here today to lobby with all of our federal uh, legislators uh, to ensure that we can pass the, the uh, John Lewis Act so that we can make sure that voting uh, and voting integrity, true voter integrity, uh, is available for all Americans, in particular Texas. Explain how it went down yesterday, um, the chartering the flights, getting on the planes. Uh, what? How many of you left? 51 Texas state representatives? Well, more than 51 of us have, have already left. Uh, while we may not have converged on Washington, D.C. altogether, uh, what we all, in solidarity, have left and have uh, made our way to uh, D.C. to make sure that we can uh, make sure that we stop. Uh, this oppressive, oppressive uh, bill that the Republicans are putting forth. This is not something that happened overnight. This is something that we have all had to talk about. We understood that from the very beginning, while we've tried to, uh, to, to negotiate, while we've tried to communicate, and certainly while we've tried to legislate, uh, the Republicans have uh, simply turned a, uh, a deaf ear and a blind eye to those needs of the, uh, the, the citizens of Texas. And so we realized at that point there was no more negotiation that could be done. Uh, and so, therefore, we took uh, our last uh, tool in our toolbox and we broke form. Uh, to make sure that the Republicans understand that we're here to communicate and we're here to negotiate, not simply to be bullied and pushed uh, around by the Republicans and, and using uh, bully tactics like stopping uh, thousands of Americans' um, um, salaries and insurance that the Republican governor uh, has put in place to say that uh, if we don't vote the way he wants us to vote, uh, that this is what he's going to do to try to punish not Democrat legislators, but hardworking Texans uh, on both sides of the aisle. And so, uh, but we're not here to be bullied, and we're making sure that we're standing tall and we're going to stand strong and we're going to stand together. So explain to the bill. Real. Explain the bill that has been put forward that Republicans say they revised since the last time you all left uh, at the end of the session to stop um, the passage of um, these voter suppression bills. Explain this new one. Well, Number one, the only revisions that they have made is the lies that they first put forth. They said that it was a typo. It wasn't 11 o'clock. It was supposed to be 1 o'clock or vice versa. Uh, they said that they didn't know that judges had the, the right to overturn elections without any uh, type of uh, um, uh, um, uh, evidence that there was fraud in place. And so those are mistakes that they said that had been made. But one of the things that people are overlooking is the fact that the Republicans have given power to poll watchers to simply go into polls and be disruptive, to simply intimidate not only poll uh, election judges, but simply um, uh, uh, voters. 
And so that is one of the biggest uh, ones for me that I will stand uh, strong against because these remind me of days of yesteryear when there were intimidating factors, intimidating individuals standing at the polls, intimidating black people as they were going to vote, uh, standing with dogs, standing with police officers. So these are the type of, uh, of efforts that we are going to stop uh, because those poll workers have the ability to be very disruptive inside these polling sites. So what can the federal government do? You have Biden going to Philadelphia. It was a lot of progressive Democrats who demanded he take, make this more high profile, the whole issue of voting rights and the For the People Act. He didn't give a major speech on voting rights the week that it was up for a vote. He gave a speech on crime. Crime. But now he's going to Philadelphia to speak for the first time in a very focused way on this. What do you think the Democrats need to do in Congress that hasn't been done yet, and President Biden himself? Become more unapologetic. Become uh, what we need uh, and what the re Republicans have, quite frankly, have always done. They have uh, been unapologetic in their positions uh, to get forth their legislation. And so we must do the same. Uh, we have to make sure that we're protecting all American citizens uh, and not simply our base. And that's what Democrats uh, certainly have always done. But we have to make sure that we, we, we push back on, on some of the hateful, harmful uh, legislation that, that the Republicans have put forth. And we certainly need to, to get rid of uh, uh, the filibuster to ensure that we can uh, have a straight up and down vote, that, that we can get these things passed. But we must become more unapologetic uh, and, and, and be straightforward with what we need to get done in order to protect uh, all of our citizens in, in America. I want to bring Gilberto Hinojosa into this conversation. Uh, you're the head of the Democratic Party of Texas. Um, three quarters of the Democratic legislators in Texas are either Latinx or African American. Can you explain the significance of this in light of what the Republicans are pushing through? Yes. Well, that's precisely the issue here. Um, this legislation that the Republicans call legislation for voter integrity is not legislation for voter integrity. It's legis uh, voting legislation to suppress the Hispanic, Mexican-American, and the African-American vote. And so what, what the Republicans were asking our legislators to do is to sit in a session, give them a quorum, so that they could pass this voter suppression legislation designed to, to prevent Mexican-American Afri and African-American voters from voting, which are the constituents of these uh, Democratic state uh, representatives uh, that have uh, gone to Washington to seek justice. In other words, they were asking them to be part of this process to take away the right to vote of their very own constituents. And that's why they couldn't have any part of that. That's why they left. That's why they came to Washington, D.C., to fight to ensure that Congress stops this uh, 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 legislation, not just in Texas, but all across the country. Because what you're seeing in Texas is the same thing you're seeing in Georgia, in Florida, in Arizona, and across the country, where these um, uh, voting suppression bills are being advocated by the Republican Party. Um, this is something that is critical to our community. Our community um, is in a situation where we, 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 we in a need economic help. We need help to ensure that we have access to health care. We need help to ensure that we have better schools in our community. And that can only happen when we uh, are able to pass the legislation to do those things. And that can only happen when we elect Democrats that are going to be in that position. So all of this is tied together. The Republicans do not want to let go of power because they understand that once they do that, the Democrats are going to start passing legislation that is going to help the people of the state of Texas, African-Americans, Hispanics, white Americans, Asian Americans, uh, working families all across the state of Texas on the, on the critical needs of their families, on the issues that are important to the quality of life. And so that's why our legislators have no choice. So Chairman Hinojosa, Governor Abbott says he's going to just keep calling these sessions, that they're going to get this law passed. Can you stop it? I believe we can, for a couple of reasons. I, I believe what uh, Representative Johnson is doing, along with the other legislators, is critical. We, you know, the filibuster is a product of the, of the a creature of the Jim Crow era. It was a way that Southern white Republicans stopped 
um, uh, civil rights legislation, voting rights legislation. So they need to get rid of this filibuster when it comes to voting rights legislation and allow these bills pending in Congress to pass to prevent this from happening. So we need this time. But secondly, I think people in the state of Texas are, are tired of Greg Abbott's games. You know, this, he only responds to the right wing of his base. This is red meat that he's feeding the right wing of his base. He's got two right wing Republicans running against him today, the former chair of the Republican Party in the state of Texas. Uh, they're pushing him to do these kinds of things because he's genuinely worried about being reelected or winning his own primary. And so what I think is happening is people in the state of Texas are seeing this. And instead of repairing the grid that you saw in the news a few months ago where people were freezing to death, we lost between four or 500 people in the state of Texas that literally froze to death because we didn't have uh, power uh, because the electric grid in the state failed. Instead of trying to fix this, He's, he's dealing with these these uh, issues like uh, voter suppression, like uh, preventing transgender children from being able to, to engage in sports um, in order to satisfy his base. Instead of taking care of the, of the needs of the people of the state of Texas, I believe the state of the people in this state are going to get tired of this. And they're going to tell Greg Abbott, why don't you get down to our business instead of your right wing so, business? And uh, let me just end ahead. with uh, Representative Johnson, who fled the state with the other uh, scores of Texas representatives to stop what they're calling the suppression session. And it's the story of Ervis Rogers. Um, um, the video of him went viral in social media for being the last person in line at Texas Southern University to cast a vote at 1 a.m. on Super Tuesday in March. March 2020, he was applauded as a tenacious, civic-minded man who worked hard to exercise his right to vote. Now he's being prosecuted by the Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton for allegedly voting illegally. Um, he had once served time in prison uh, years and years ago. The significance of this. The significance of this is, is it, again, reminds us of yesteryear. These are intimidating factors that they're using to make sure that black and brown people will not vote. And if you do, this was potentially can happen to you. The fact that Hervis Rogers was given a voter registration card straight out of prison by the prison system, and the fact that the that that Hervis Rogers was never told that he could not vote. But then simply because uh, Ken Paxton wants to use uh, Herbert Rogers and many others uh, as an example to intimidate is what they are doing. He is walking Herbert Rogers to the middle of the courtyard and showing everyone, if you do this, this is what will happen. And on top of that, going to Montgomery County to place a $100,000 bond on his head. Uh, when in actuality today, uh, today somebody uh, shot a police officer and had a seventy-five thousand dollar bond uh, placed on his head. But the, so you understand what Ken Paxton, who by the way is under indictment himself, has the audacity to attack um, people like Hervis Rogers, uh, who are simply trying to exercise uh, their civil right to vote. Well. I want to thank you both for being with us. We'll continue to follow um, the Texas delegation who has left Texas to stop what they call the suppression session, Texas State Representative Jarvis Johnson and Gilberto Hinojosa, chair of the Texas Democratic Party. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, if Roe v. Wade doesn't survive, can reproductive rights be preserved without it? We'll speak with the authors of a new book called Controlling Women. Stay with us.